roads are so, are so quiet, unbelievable. I haven't really seen any other tourists at all today. So I've just crossed on the um, Northern Territory side of Savannah Way. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying the escarpments that are, are in this location. It's really cold, changing the scenery. Needed to find a place to stop for the night and found this lovely little track and uh, this is going to be my campsite day number one. Um, yeah, <laughs> I need to unpack all my groceries, I've got washed clothing away and uh, the road's not too far away, you can probably hear a car over there, probably only 50 metres away but I'm stealth mode down this little track and uh, very happy with it. So it's now time to set up the tent and um, unpack my gear, put some repellent on because I'm already getting eaten and uh, mellow out for the day, for the night I should say. Long day today. I started. Gosh, where was I? I was in a 40 mile scrub national park last night and went through to Indara this morning. Um, walked part way around the rim, with the dried up and got some amazing footage. And then I didn't really do the rest of it. The, um, the lava tube tours weren't operating. It was really commercial, and I'm not, I don't like commercialization of national parks. So um, I didn't go there. Um, and then I went out to Cobold, I Gorge, I thought Cobold Gorge was a national park. Can't kind of get to it, like this very commercial resorty camping ground. And um, once again, I didn't like that. So that was a 160k detour that I didn't really need. This is between a uh, little town of Forsyth and Cobalt Gorge. And I really just had to show you the, <laughs> the terrain. It's just quite beautiful in its own way. Very, very dry as you can see. And uh, this is all farmland. It's 
so awesome being out here. It's just got a little bit drier the last sort of a few kilometers or so. And uh, as you can see, the road is pretty quiet. Not much traffic coming past, which is how I like my roads. Day number two, and this is campsite number two. So this is an old section of road. There's a new road and bridge. This must have been a ford over the river. It's the dry season and there's hardly any water there. Got a lot of insects, or <laughs> blasted at insect repellent. I've got some shade, the sun's just going down now. And it's level and dry and not dirty. And I'm so looking forward to relaxing because it's really hot. Oh, there's an anchor halfway up a tree. Check it out. I've got the feeling that was put there rather than um, came there. But I'm now, um, this is west of Georgetown but south of Croydon. This is actually Littleton National Park. And um, it's late, it's really stinking hot. And as you can hear from the um, stuff underfoot, the ground's really dry. I'm not going anywhere near that water to swim because it's all just full of manky, dried up water and insects. But I've got plenty of cold water in the fridge which I'm going to pour over myself and I'm going to settle in for the evening. Yeah! And enjoy my space. This is the Savannah Way between Normanton and Burgtown. And even though there's not a lot to see, there also is a lot to see. Um, it's incredibly dry. It's almost midday and it's incredibly hot. But it's worth a stop to walk around in the air. It's the end of the dry season and there's not much water down here in the Leichhardt Falls but uh, it must absolutely rage through here as you can see by the gouges way up here above the falls so um, it must be so impressive in the wet season There's flowing water I've been driving for about uh, six hours I think including my brakes to do some photography so um, let's go check it out the colour of the water doesn't look necessarily bad and fighting, but it's uh, I've got my swimsuit with me just in case. And uh, let's go check it out. Water, fresh water, yay! I'm so getting in. Nice big pool there.
Well, after seven hours on the Savannah Way, this is absolute paradise. So this is just, uh, just out of Burktown on um, the road to Gregory. So a slight detour off the Savannah Way to get to this lovely little waterhole. And um, oh my goodness. Yes, I am in my swimsuit. I've just been down in this little water hole cooling off. Um, the water's a bit murky and uh, it's a little bit muddy. But um, look at this beautiful trees. Beautiful setting. And uh, yeah, I was just sitting in the shallows there, really enjoying that. So I'm more than ready for a rest. I haven't really eaten today. It's almost been too hot to even think about it. I've just been drinking litres and litres of water. Um, very, very happy. I really needed to stop driving and uh, this is absolutely perfect as you can tell by how excited my voice is. Just leveled the truck up, got the spade off to level it up just a little bit and um, got the bonnet up. It's just the engine cooling down and apparently um, I learnt from my time in southwest of the southwest Queensland that the mice, it's a theory that the mice are less likely to go and to make a nest in there if the bonnet's up. I'm not sure if it's true but I'm going to stick with that. Rooftop tents up, and there's even someone's built a beautiful little fire pit here. It's a nice log, so I think tonight it's going to be a nice fire beside the creek. Let's make sure we time. Paradise. So, this is day number three, campsite number three, another free site. And um, this one is listed on the map as a little campsite. Um, Who got it? Bush camping, I just love it. This is the view from inside my rooftop tent this afternoon. So this is day three campsite, a nice bush camping site. And I'm um, very happy to find some shade and fresh water. So yeah, time to chill out and download all the videos and photos I've taken today and just enjoy. I just crossed into the Northern Territories, uh, I'm not sure how many kilometres ago, not that far, 20, 30, 40. This is up in the escarpment, it's really nice to see a change from the low-lying savannah into some rocky escarpment territory. And uh, So this is day four of my journey along the Savannah Way and uh, started about 6.30 this morning and um, drove through Burktown, filled up there, very expensive fuel at $2.76 a litre for diesel but um, I guess they've got a long way to bring the diesel so I can't begrudge them that and uh, continuing my journey I had and planned on spending a couple of days down in Bridger Miller, uh, which is called Lawn Hill National Park. But it's mostly closed at the moment due to um, some previous flood damage. So um, couldn't go there. So heading up to the next national park um, on my journey, which will be the Limon National Park. It's nice just to stop and get out of the vehicle, take a look around. Yeah many hours without really stopping for long. I actually stopped and checked my tyre pressure and um, 
Yeah, they're up a little bit high, just for the heat, so I've let them down a little bit. If the road gets much rougher and more corrugated, I'll let them down some more. Okay, so everything else is going good. Keeping an eye on my engine temperature. And um, obviously every morning I do my oil the fluids check and have a look to look for anything else that's going on. The other thing I've got going on is on my left rear wheel hub. There's a bit of dust gathering here. So I'm going to check those bolts a little bit later, see if there's any oil coming out. That's the only thing, everything else seems really good. And, uh, I'm not pushing it too fast, um, obviously the road conditions and um, yeah, I don't need to go break in anything. Get back to it. There we go. Hey, so um, the roads are so, uh, so quiet, unbelievable. I haven't really seen any other tourists at all today. So I've just crossed on the um, Northern Territory side of Savannah Way and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying the escarpments that are, are in this location. It's really cool, changing the scenery. Um, driving a little bit slower than I have been, the road's got a bit rougher, so I've just let my, uh, let my tire pressure down. Um, but enjoying it, yeah. So today's a bit of a long day um, ahead of me. Oh, it's really long. I hope to be fine and shady, maybe even put a hole in the park by about 1 or 2 o'clock today, um, which would be Oh yeah, flowing fresh water, so good, it's midday, it's hot and dry, and uh, yay! I've already been in the one place underneath the bridge, so I've got to go up the river, or down the river further, and uh, check out these little spots here, seeing a beautiful big lizard in the water. Lots of little fishies in here. So nice to explore. Not sitting in the truck driving. Okay, back in the water.
is the Robinson River crossing here and look at my little stealthy little camp spot next to the river isn't this gorgeous so day number four and campsite number four another little oasis um, the first decent sized trees I've seen in a couple of hours of driving and um, the sound of flowing water I've got my Starlink satellite dish up so I'm going to be able to send this to my family and friends and have video calls while I'm here in the middle of nowhere and uh, there are crocs around and um, there's a croc sign a warning sign um, there is another big body of water up there I've had a quick check of this pool before I approached it and I've actually had a quick swim in here as well there's no crocs in here right now um, which is where I've just been for a little swim but yeah I'm not going near the main body of water up there and um, being careful but here I am a little bit of paradise a long day's driving and uh, this is my spot I might even sling up a hammock between that tree and the truck let's see how we go <sighs> time to chill so this is the view from my rooftop tent tonight and uh, very pleased to find another little oasis next to some running water and um, some beautiful shade, some big trees, so it's epic. Um, it is right next to the road again, um, that's the road there and that's the river crossing that the road goes through. Um, but uh, yeah, not much traffic at the moment, um, two cars have gone past in the past two hours and that's probably the rush hour I'd imagine, I'd say it's done for now. So pretty amazing, um, this is the Northern Territories and I'm about a hundred kilometers south of um, Borolula, 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 there you go, I think that's how you say it, and um, a couple hundred k's uh, northwest of Hell's Gate, which is the last town I went through. So um, soaking it up. So it's time to um, download the photos I've taken today in the video. So my drone, my SLR camera, my GoPro which I'm using and my phone camera. And pretty much every, at the end of every day I um, download them onto a computer and theoretically I download them onto the computer, delete, edit, rename or name them and um, add metadata to them. But um, yeah, a couple of, um, I was pretty tired the last couple of days, I didn't get that finished and left it too late and I kind of fell asleep on dark. So I've stopped nice and early today and I'm going to download them and um, I've got some great footage um, from the journey so far, it's only day number four. So it's um, pretty early in the morning on day five of my journey across the Savannah Plains and um, to select Robinson River Crossing, which is a beautiful camp spot if you camp right next to the river. The official camp spot up there, the hills that bear to dry fly like him. But yeah, I don't know if you can hear the bumpy bumpies, but uh, lots of corrugated. So I'm um, doing the better late than never approach. Just driving nice and slow. I'm probably only doing 30 up to 40 k's there along here. I know a lot of other people like to do the 70 to 80 and glide across the top of the corrugations, but I'm not taking that approach. I've taken the Tanya's comfortable approach, which is um, nice and slow. I don't want to shake most any of the rivets that are holding um, the shelving pieces. I don't want to put this extra stress on uh, my axles or any of the other bits that are really important to keep my vehicle but I'm keep it feeling nice and slow and uh, a bit of cup of tea uh, listening to an audio book and um, yeah obviously at this point I'm not going to kill any kangaroo either another added bonus from my point of view but uh, yeah so it's um, from my starting point to first town and on the route this morning um, it's about 100 kilometers might take me a couple of hours at least to do the 100 kilometers, maybe more to go pace down. What I do find funny 
is it's quite rough, corrugated, and then you'll see a sign saying rough surface. So it gets even rougher when they say that. Kind of hilarious, really. So my approach is uh, pretty much the same way I drove the PDR up to the tip of Australia. It is off the side, on the sandy stuff as much as possible, totally avoiding the corrugations. But I let my tyres down yesterday. When they were quite hot, I let them down to about 28 psi. So the tyres probably still quite cool, so it'll be lower than 28, which is perfect. And um, yeah, just cruising. Got a bit of a um, had blue sky days for the first four days. A bit of overcast today, um, which I'm worried will burn off a bit more. But uh, nice and cool this time in the morning. And as I say, I got up um, super early this morning, woke up at like 4.30. Because I'm falling asleep so early at night. Like, I'm so tired from the driving and the heat. I'm falling asleep by 8 o'clock at night. So, so I had enough sleep by 4, 4.30. So up at 4.30, did a bit of video editing. Watched the, uh, watched the dawn, caked up the truck and on the road about it just oh, enjoying it. And I think I might have come into a brief moment of cell phone coverage. So most of the time um, yesterday and today I imagine I'm going to be out of cell phone coverage. I've got my satellite device which is really cool so I can get messages to my friends and family. And I've sent tracking information to a couple of friends so they're following me to see what I'm doing which is really cool. Keeping an eye on me, it's really nice. And uh, yeah. That's about it. Okay, back to watching uh, the corrugations. See ya. Hi, I thought I'd show you some of the uh, corrugations on the road. Um, this is uh, between Robinson River and Rabula. So I um, don't know if the light's catching them, but apparently we're getting coming towards rough surface. <laughs> so that means that it's going to be worse than that. So, uh, just taking it easy and um, yeah, there's been a bit of fire through here. I don't know if this has been a controlled burn. Um, there's still some um, areas that are burning, so it's pretty recent. And, uh, we are just uh, cruising, cruising, cruising. crossing um, looks like there's a few wheel tracks going that way I might just check it out can't really see through the sun's reflection doesn't look too deep through there but um, Yeah. There's only room for one vehicle on this main road, and uh, he definitely hits right away. 
so this is the end of day five and I've done a really big day's driving today and this is my campsite tonight it is the least scenic of the campsite so far but in many ways it's got the best amenities it's actually got picnic tables fire pits rubbish bins toilets and there's some water tank there should be pretty quiet and um, I am tired and I'm just gonna mellow out so day five campsite number five So um, my friend Andre recommended Bitter Springs to me. Um, he said Mataranka Springs are really commercialised and uh, I'm not into that at all. Whereas Bitter Springs apparently are not. So here we are. This is in the Althea National Park. And I'm just going to go check out Bitter Springs. And it's um, right at the end. It's right at the end of the dry season. So I'm interested to see how much water is actually in the springs. So, the springs are still flowing, and um, but it's also super nice. I've just spent day number six on my journey across the Savannah Way, and I've spent the time just driving, driving, driving. So this is so awesome to have some proper time, some beautiful um, full-size trees. days of dusty corrugator roads and it's a warm thermal hot to bring. Look at the amazing setting I'm in. It's just like yeah. it's funny like yesterday I had a moment like after day five of driving across the savannah I'm like oh what am I doing this for? What am I here? I'm spending all this money on fuel. I'm traveling by myself and I could be home with my family. And I get here and I'm like, this is what I'm doing this for. I love exploring. And um, obviously I love swimming. And uh, this is beautiful. It's so nice being here and it's not the main touristy season. There's um, two other people in the swimming area. There's two other cars in the car park. So it's nice and quiet, which is great. We have a lot of hot humid critters. Now don't worry so much about this guy. He is nearly extinct. He is a northern mouse spider. So called because he's actually large enough to eat a mouse if he ever found one wow. in his way, which is quite freaky. Uh, this guy's a much more common find for us. Now we call him the bandy bandy locally. Uh, if you ask Google what a bandy bandy is, he'll show you a black and white snake. So just to be sure, we call him the brown tree snake just to differentiate guys. Now he is nocturnal. And most times when we see him, we just see a few curves of his belly scales poking out of a crevice in the walls of the cave. Uh, they're generally asleep at this time of day, but they will stick their heads out into the cave at night time. Try and snatch a cricket out of the air, get a feed like that. Uh, now these are our bats that we get in our cave, our two most common ones. This fella up the top is called the ghost bat. Now they're both micro bats, but the ghost bat's quite large for a micro bat, can grow anything up to about that wide across is an absolute giant. Uh, this bloke's more typical for a micro bat. He's about four inches across, just to give uh, across from wingtip to wingtip, just to give you a bit of an idea. Now this bloke up the top is quite carnivorous, and he's, he is also big enough to eat a mouse if you felt like we've seen them eating them in this cave, which is quite morbid. Uh, but he has given us the idea that he might be responsible for the dropping number of the orange leaf nose bat guys. 
Now he's extinct down in South Australia and going extinct up here in the Territory. So we're rather excited in that in the last uh, month or so, we've had some sightings of a very, very small bat with uh, black on the back of its wings and a fair chest. So if you see a bat like that or even a ambiguous looking moth, snap a photo of it guys because we love to have this extinct and endangered bat back in our cave where he belongs. So this is the entrance to the Cutter Cave. We're on a little tour with a few other tourists. And our guide is just taking us down towards the cave entrance now. shapes, the extraordinary shapes it's in. Uh, that's just erosion from the rain, guys. So this, uh, the, oh, so sorry guys, the limestone you can see around us was all formed during the Cambrian period, guys. That's 505 to 590 million years ago. So the walls of this cave do predate the dinosaurs and they do it by quite a lot too. Uh, now, during that time in this place, there was a great inland sea in Australia. Now this great inland sea had lots of crustaceans living in it guys and when these crustaceans died their bodies actually rotted away and their shells would fall to the bottom of the sea eventually getting crushed and milled and tumbled to the point where they compacted down into limestone and that is where all this limestone comes from. Uh, now as I mentioned they used to sneak out from barracks all the time come down here and throw mad parties. As such they turned this into the unofficial nightclub of 16 Mile Military Camp, changing its name to 16 Mile Cave in 1942, guys. So this is the scenery just um, on the rest of the walk outside the Cutter Cutter Caves. A bit barren at the moment because of the fire, but it's very beautiful as well. Those lead of falls. These are really, really awesome. How do I find the ghost woman? And enjoy. Oh, yeah. Fresh water again. That's it. day six and this is campsite number six I've got all the doors open trying to get some sort of breeze to go through because it's really hot and um, this isn't far from Edith Falls and just north of Catherine just been swimming there but um, have decided to free camp for bush camp here and that's uh, the main railway line there so just chilling out letting the engine cool down with the bonnet up because it's still sticking hot, I thought it'd help the engine to cool down. And uh, yeah, there's a few flies here which are a bit annoying. But I'm just chilling out and uh, enjoying some quiet. Ocean, it's so good to see it again after being on the Savannah Way. And this is Darwin, Darwin City's over there. I think this is called East Point. Ah, oh, so nice to see that colour, just to smell the ocean. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I came into Darwin to vote. Um, the New Zealand elections were this weekend, and I found out 
I could vote in person, so that was super cool. Drove into Darwin, and I needed air, condi air conditioning top up for the Land Rover. I've got that done. So yeah, a little bit of time to look around. Go visit some uh, family of friends. Friends of friends, family of friends. And then head back out to the bush. Darwin City is just there. Sit there. 